The comments and views expressed on The More Show are those of the people that make them and do not necessarily reflect the view of Kevin Moore, The More Show, or this radio station and its affiliate or sponsors. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Broadcasting from the UK and across the world online, you're now watching The More Show and I'm your host, Kevin Moore. Now for the next hour, I'll be covering subjects that will open up your mind and provide you with information you may have never heard before. Now on today's show, I'm about to be joined with my guest, Brittany Love. Now Brittany is the author of A Diary of a Starseed, which is a true story which shares an inspirational and empowering transformation. Now, Brittany spent most of her life overweight and battling eating disorders, but when she finally lost 120 pounds, she discovered that changing just her outside physical appearance wasn't bringing her the happiness she'd expected. Now, continuing through her early 20s, Brittany still felt confused, depression and anxiety on where to go in life and how to make peace with the woman looking back at her in the mirror. Now, after discovering that she was pregnant at the age of 25, Brittany followed her intuition and made a radical change by moving into the beautiful Arizona wilderness and spent her pregnancy communing with nature's wisdom and meeting amazing people from all walks of life. Brittany Love, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. It's so great to be here. Oh, it's beautiful to have you on. It it really is. Thank you for joining us today to share your message, the Diary of a Starseed, Volume 1. Um, I was just saying to you off air there, there's a Volume 2 as well, I believe, that you're doing? Yep, so I'll have this, I'm working on the second one right now through this winter, and I um, hope to have that out probably January, early February. But it's a really beautiful travel series of learning to trust in the universe, um, that we're not alone, that these are really exciting times to be alive and getting out of fear. Um, yeah, that's, that's what this book's really that's about. That's so important, getting out of fear. And that the trust as well. Well, we're going to get into the aspect of trust to go on to the, the journey that you did. That's incredible, uh, especially with a little one as well. Um, <laughs> J- Brittany Love, that's, your now, that's now your default name, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, I changed my last name to love because I feel like that's the most important thing we need to be bringing into the world at this time, uh, sharing our love with each other and nothing else, you know, this is what we need. And so yeah, that's why I go by Brittany Love. <laughs> no, it's a great name. I, I love it. <laughs> what can I say? It's great. <laughs> um, that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been on a journey. Now, um, back... Back in the day, a little bit, uh, from what I've read about yourself as well, uh, you had an eating disorder. Uh, well, you, had, you, you, you battled with overweight. I don't know about an, e- an eating disorder. Um, but you finally lost 120 pounds uh, at one point as well. Now, was that prior to uh, getting pregnant? Yes, this was uh, prior to getting pregnant. Um, I definitely spent, I, I wasn't raised in a spiritual family whatsoever. I wasn't raised in a family that was conscious about how we eat or the significance of what we're putting into our body. Um, So I definitely ate a lot of GMOs and and, um, had a hard time at school. I didn't realize what an empathic being I was, so I would emotionally eat a lot. Um, And when I first lost the weight, it was basically through diet and exercise, but I didn't have a huge spiritual background yet. So I soon found that after my weight loss, I was picking up new addictions and um, bad habits. I was starting to drink and um, starting to party a bit and starting to smoke cigarettes. So it wasn't necessarily the weight loss that was like the fix to everything. It was getting a truth of who I really am and what my mission here is on the planet now. Right. Do, do you think when you say that you was, you know, partying a bit more and everything else like that, uh, was it control? Do you think you was in control of it or do you think it was a bit excessive? Mm. I didn't party too much. I just, I remember too, right after the weight loss, I was really learning about like uh, the corruption in government taking place with like 9-11 and learning about GMO foods and it had me really upset in like a negative, fearful place. And so that wasn't that good either. I was really angry and I was willing to like wake up everybody that I knew. But I was also putting other people into fear and into that negative state. 
So what I like about my book is um, it's straight out of my journal. It's a true story. And it starts out right when I had lost this weight. And, um, and the, the trouble I was going through with figuring out what I'm supposed to be doing in life. And um, You know, um, that's interesting, actually, what you were saying. So interesting that you were um, heavily into the cons- well, conspiracies and, the, and that kind of uh, agenda. <laughs> don't, don't think you're on your own in that journey. Lots of people were, are. And sometimes I think a person gets stuck on those subjects and they for me right I've got nothing look, there's nothing wrong with waking people up in that sense yeah but where's the solution where's the answer in any of that stuff that's the, that's the problem I always yeah. felt so that that's what I actually meant to shift into was um, in 2012 when so many of us went through that mass awakening um, this is also when my son first made contact with me and uh, the time when I got pregnant um, I remember I was just starting to practice meditation. I was getting away from the drinking and all that. And I was sitting in my backyard and I just quieted my thoughts. And I heard, I'm coming to you soon. I'm a Syrian. I was like, wait, what? I was like, I think I'm about to be pregnant. And I feel like it's a boy. And um, I was listening to a lot of Bashar at the time. So that was really interesting. And then sure enough, two weeks later, I found out that I was pregnant. And I just knew it was a boy. And since I heard Syrian so clearly, I... um, decided to name him that and I I really do believe that we do have star family helping us in these times and um yeah we're definitely not alone <laughs> that's incredible so so what got you into Bashar then I mean what what what, what uh what um my partner at the time actually we he introduced me to some of the YouTube videos and I was really resonating with the messages there um and so we started listening to that. And then when we did find out we were pregnant, this is when we decided to sell everything we had and the house we were renting in Arizona and go live out in nature. Um, and this is what really shifted me from being in that fearful place and worrying about conspiracy theories to realizing we do live on a magical planet and this is a wonderful time to be alive. And how can we come up with solutions? So taking that time of getting out of society and away from all the fearful media and stuff and just being out in nature and with myself, that really tapped me into the divine and um, a spiritual knowing that that's going to be okay. Absolutely. And, and, and do, I mean, do you think 25 was young to have kids? I mean, but I mean, for yourself, was it, uh, was that a big shock? Was it, well, you know, were you, I suppose you never it really was, ready. It was the blessing that I needed because when you're about to be a mom, uh, you start to take care of yourself on a whole new level because it's not just about you anymore. You're bringing life into this world. So our main reason for wanting to go out into nature was to be uh, breathing in the freshest, beautiful mountain air, to be drinking fresh spring water. I wanted to be taking healthy walks in nature. Um, so it was really a maturing experience for me and what I needed. You know, I, I'd never eaten so well in my life. I was actually meditating. I was watching my thoughts. I was just really emotionally taking care of myself. Right, wow. Um, okay, so obviously, um, sorry, what's your son's name again? It's a, it's a cool name, what, what is it? His name is Syrian. Syrian, yeah. right. Um, uh, was, I, I'm guessing he, he was brought up on the road a little bit then. So I, um, I did a home birth with him, and um, when he was three months old, his dad and I started to travel again. We took him to the Redwood Forest in Northern California. Um, and so he's, he's definitely spent more of his life outdoors in nature than he has inside. And I've really seen what a um, true blessing that has been for him. Just his coordination, his awareness, his um, health. You know, he's never been sick in his three years. So it's been amazing to raise my son so much out in nature. That's incredible. I mean, you know, not everyone has that chance with their kids to do that. So um, am I right to say then that you did travel to many, you hit the road and you didn't come back for a a long time then? Yeah, so um, the first book, it kind of, it ends with my partner and I splitting. And, um, but you know, when we were out in nature and when we were out in the woods, the one thing I felt missing was the tribe, was community. I loved being out in nature, but I missed having good people around. So it really inspired me to want to go out there and learn from what sort of communities exist now. How are people living more harmonious with each other? What's happening? So, um, yeah, since my son has been born, I've traveled with him to Hawaii. We lived for a couple months on an organic farm there. 
And then we also just recently did a six-month trip in my minivan. Uh, we started at the northern tip of Washington, which is kind of by the border of Canada. And we drove all the way down through the southwest. And then we just hit New York and came back to Arizona. So um, it was quite the journey, but it was really beautiful. And that's all what's going to be in part two of this book. Is, um, that's that amazing. And, and we've just been playing uh, the clip of uh, one of your videos that you put together. It's a compilation of photos from... I think it's that journey I think it was from. Um, yeah. And it, it just looks, you look so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone looks so happy there. <laughs> what an amazing thing to do. So, okay, so, you, so you're not with the partner that, that you was before the journey started out, right? Um, well, you met some amazing people on the road. I mean, I, I, I was just watching some of the interviews and, I, and there was one, you even got to interview... I don't know how this happened, but a, 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 a Holocaust survivor as well, uh, a, you know, and lots of other people. I mean, these were just people you met on your journey, were they? Yeah, it's actually, it's amazing because amazing. sometimes our minds so want to know the how, when, what, where, why of how everything's going to unfold. But really, if you just follow your intuition, if you have a positive intention, the universe will line you up with the right people and it will just flow. That's so true, isn't it? Do, do, do you feel that nowadays that you're more in the flow? As in the sense yeah. that, you know, if you just, you know, there's, in, there's things that you want to do, but if you just flow, the universe yeah. brings it to you in either, well, in better ways sometimes, maybe ways that you've not even, you know, considered. Exactly. And that's what I've really enjo uh, enjoyed about journaling my story and sharing it because I'm still human. I'm still going through this process with everybody. And so I have my times of feeling anxious or doubtful and then I'll keep going and it's amazing what lines up or what happens so I hope other people can see that and, and know that you know that it's the same for them that if they ever get stuck or need help that just pray for that guidance and be open to signs and, and you'll be led to where you need to be at the right time um, that but by coming from that space it just brings it, that that's the wonder of life, and it from coming from that space sometimes as well. Um, and, and 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 again, back to your YouTube channel with some of the people that you've met uh, in these eco villages, and 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 they're they're kind of completely off the grid. Some of them, aren't they? Yes. Um, yeah, there's some amazing places out there. It was when I first started this journey, I was kind of worried that I wouldn't find enough places to visit or whatever. And there was actually an overwhelming amount um, here in the U.S. specifically that I know about um, where people are coming together as community and trying to live, you know, differently than we, how we have been so separated. And, you know, my main mission in life is I really do want to establish my own eco-village or community someday. So that was part of the inspiration for this journey with my son was to learn from the places that already exist and to you know get ideas and see how people are doing things yeah i think that's well that's that's that's, that's an amazing goal uh, let me ask you then um do you think that you have to do the things that you love first and in that sense you have to put yourself first then by putting yourself first you put your son and everyone else first yeah i feel um we have to nurture ourselves and have healthy boundaries, um, nurturing ourselves right, like keeping ourselves emotionally balanced, nurturing ourselves with the food that we're eating. T are we taking enough time in nature and recharging? You know, are we constantly stressing and worrying or playing into drama? Um, if we're in those other s mindsets, you know, we're not going to reach our goals or we're going to be in a totally different alignment state than how we could be if we're nurturing ourselves right, if we're taking that time for meditation and, and getting ourselves regrounded and recentered. You know, there's so much karmic clearing happening right now. Oh, and God. so it's really, yeah. isn't it? Wow. <laughs> so crazy. Big time. So to practice unconditional love for yourself and forgiveness and for others. It's so important. And, and it's quite fitting that we're doing this interview today on um, Thanksgiving as well. Um, I can imagine for some people, Thanksgiving, it must be a little tough for some people right now. Yeah, there's a lot happening over here. You know, even with, um, in the, with the North Dakota oil pipeline and stuff, we can't just keep taking from the earth how we have been and not giving back and there are alternative solutions out there and we need to start implementing them and not letting 
big corporations or money being the driving force for why we're doing certain things on the planet. It's really not okay anymore. And this is a time to evolve and things are going to be accelerating, you know? So it's really important that we get on the right track that we want to be on. Well, that's it. I mean, I've said to people that, that if you wanted to see when the, the, a, a change was going to happen or a shift, it just started with the election results. You're in this shift <laughs> now. Yeah, 2012, okay, there was something there as well. But this is it. This is the start of, of, a, of a shift now. You, you're definitely on the oh, – this, this is it. Um, there's, and, and not just in America, all over the world there's, there's change change taking place um so it definitely is a great time to 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 witness this and i think it's a a time where it it calls us more into the alignment of living our joy living our passion and that's how we change the world yes and and being there for each other because we can't buy into this fear and stuff. It's all out there. I know that. But we have free will in this reality. We need to lift each other up and support each other and not buy into this. And what can we do as individuals to make our world a better place? What can we do as individuals to strengthen our community? You know, everything that's happening right now is divinely orchestrated and it's giving us the power back as individuals to be the change that we want to see in the world. That is mm-hmm. so, so true. So true. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, there is a lot of fear out there. But, you know, it's made me realize, and I've put this into a few vlogs and talked to other people as well, that why are we so fearful of what's there right now, man? I just don't get it. Why, why can't we see how much power that we've got, that the politics and politicians don't, aren't in charge? They're not going to stop you going on a road trip, do you know what I mean? Or meaning these wonderful, or, or having your own eco uh, facility. But yet we seem, other people seem so addicted and so so much vile against uh, the, the the political system, where it's you know, almost like what what they do affects us, and it, it doesn't to a greater extent. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people haven't practiced using their power. They're so used to feeling like someone else is going to take care of them. Right. And, you know, That's isn't that so true? <laughs> I, I had a lot of friends, too, that be like, you can't set up an eco-village, you can't go off-grid, the governments are going to come shut you down. And what I love with this journey is I've met so many people in places where that's not the case at all. They're like, we've been around since the 60s, we're fine, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're great people, aren't they, when you meet those? They are. Yeah, I bet, this, I bet some have as well. I bet some have. And... Um, okay, well, you know, in your book, uh, The Diary of a Starseed... Now, I've heard this starseed word used quite a bit. I you know, came across it with Dolores Cannon and other authors. Why, why do you feel that you're... Well, what is a starseed for those who may not know? And why do you feel you're one? Um, to me, I see us all as starseeds in a sense. We're all made of the same divine material. We're all part of these cosmos. But a starseed is someone that remembers that they incarnated for a specific mission to help Earth in these times and, and to help out our brothers and sisters. And that's what I really recognize myself as. You know, there's no other um, alternative life or career path I could do now with everything that I've experienced and know, you know, my mission is to make this world a better place. And if that's through my writing or through my videos, then, then that's what I'm going to do. And a, and a full-time mum as well. <laughs> yeah. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. That's a massive. That's a massive, um, you know, uh, purpose. Totally. Absolutely. It, um, Absolutely. And and um, actually, how you know, traveling with with um, with your son as well. What was that like? I mean, because um, some people obviously would just the thought of traveling with with, with with you know with with their child for that long would would put them off. But I, I'm I'm getting the feeling that it was quite different for you. It was, you know, okay, um, this recent trip, when I finally, when I set out to New Mexico first, I would always get this, like, anxiety waves, and um, for those who like astrology, um, I'm a Cancer sun sign, so as a Cancer, our home base is super important to us, this um, security, uh, the known is very important, so to go out into the unknown is something my energy can have a hard time with, so I would kind of, like, face anxiety of, like, oh, What's going to happen next? Are we going to be okay? And the more that I saw the universe always lined up, the right people at the right time, I just continued to trust more and more in it. So it became a lot more enjoyable, you know, the further we went. Um, I sometimes still do have a hard time when I go to a community or something and it's so beautiful and you're 
they're really having a low impact on the earth. Their architecture of their buildings are just amazing. The way the people are working together is just amazing. And then, you know, you're traveling to a different place and you're sleeping in a Walmart parking lot for a night or something. And I, I see the dysfunction of our old society and people in crazy, frazzled states. And as an empath, I'm just like, whoa, there's so many different worlds happening right now. And so sometimes it would, I'd really need to to stay balanced and in check with myself because I was experiencing so many different realities that are on earth at this time. So sometimes that would be a little tricky. <laughs> you know, that's interesting what you said as well, that, that you're a cancer and that home is so important to you. It is, isn't it? I'm on the cusp as well. I'm Cancer Leo, the 22nd oh, so of, of July. That's my son's birthday. Oh, is it? What, July the 22nd? Yeah. No way. No. <laughs> no way. Well, you know that, that that's, that's almost a master number that he's got. Awesome. Yeah, if, if you got his numerology done, I bet you he's got some master numbers in there. I bet you he has. I think it's almost the numbers of um, be, you know, you know, being able to do great things. That's that's what it, you've got that ability. Yeah. yeah. Wow, We're that's definitely here to be a healer too. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> I said, well, you 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 mentioned there as well about um, you, you think there's lots of parallel uh, realities going on right now, alternative realities. Well, you get a lot of people on to talk about this as well, and I can I, I understand what you're saying there that you 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 feel that that's something that may be happening right now that where you put your energy where you put your attention that's that's the reality that you create is that where you're coming from? Yeah, yeah. I um I kind of had a good experience with this alternate timelines. Um, I was in North Carolina um, on this trip when a lot of these race riots were happening recently. And I didn't know I didn't know anything about them because I'm not watching the TV or anything. But I kept having my mom call me up, and she's like, "Are you okay? I'm I'm seeing on the news right now. It looks awful over there. Are you being safe?" And I'm like, "We're at the park right now, having a great time with all these people. You know, like what are you talking about?" So I feel like that's an example of alternate timelines where, you know, I'm not going to experience something like that because I don't need to. You know, it's not something that's going to benefit or help. You know what I mean? Like help me in that way. Um, but some, perhaps somebody who has a belief system that violence is still okay or a solution to something, maybe they might experience a violent timeline because it's going to shift their reality or give them a new perspective. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's true. Um, yeah, you know, that, 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 that's true for anyone, isn't it? You know, some, the, those that you know will never listen to or be, in, be in, in, interested in spirituality or anything that's alternative um, will never have that come into their reality and their reality is very very different isn't it just as you're describing there um, I see that a lot as well and it, it is almost like alternative realities isn't it yes <laughs> where you put your attention your focus goes yeah or where you put your focus your attention goes shall I say um, veganism that's another big thing for you isn't it it is um I, I waver in between vegetarian and vegan. Um, that was another big shift that happened for me in 2012. I I never thought that I would not eat meat. Um, I love cheeseburgers and hot dogs and, and everything. But I started craving it, first of all, less and less. And then also watching all these documentaries on these factory farms and how these animals are being treated was a huge wake-up call for me because... If something energetically is being tortured or not treated right and we take on that energy into our bodies, that's not good. You know, so that's another, you know, a lot of people think, like, not eating meat is just because you don't like meat or whatever. And it's like, no, it's because I don't support the way that these animals are being treated in, in the process that they're doing it. Um, well, that I also feel, as, yeah, and I think, too, as we're evolving into this age of Aquarius now, um... We're taking in more light activation. We're, we're, we're evolving into a state where we don't have to harm anything to sustain ourselves. You know, like the Native Americans in the past, perhaps, yes, at least they honored the whole animal and took everything that they needed. They weren't wasteful with it. I agree with all of that, and I think that's important. But I think we're even evolving past that now to where we don't need to harm anything to sustain ourselves. Yeah, and you think of all the crappy drugs that go into... Um 
rearing you know uh, uh, masses of, of of chickens or whatever it may be I, i'm sure i was watching something recently or something on the news where there was this one particular drug in, in this chicken battery that they were given these chickens where it was an and uh, resistant to antibiotics or something i i don't know why I, I was probably maybe half in half out when listening to it but it, what it was saying was that um it, you know when you when humans consume that, that, that those chickens with with that um, type of uh, anti-resistant uh, antibiotic in them, that it gets it gets into the gut of the human being, and, and you know some people the effect of it is that they're re- resistant to antibiotics. So you know I don't you know this was some case in some country I can't this was just recently as well, but yeah it does make you think, don't it? That that you know the way they die. That shock and fear is in their in their meat, and you're kind of consuming it. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the thing. I think the most important thing is in your conscious. You know, it's part of my when I was waking up too. As I thought, oh, we have to eat all organic, and you have to, to eat perfectly if you want to be spiritual. I think above and beyond all of that, the most important thing is to always have love and gratitude for what you're consuming. You know, um, so often we're just like take without thought and we just think everything is so rightfully ours when really it's like it's, it's not <laughs> no well I'd, I'd love it don't you that we you know this is my land that's not yours or this is you know this is what I own and really do we really own it only a piece of paper says we do and did we really own the land in the first place where our buildings are based upon well no we've just said it's ours <laughs> <laughs> you know um, something yeah. else created it so um yeah, we are, we're only stewardesses of what we have for a short time. And um, I think so many people get stuck into materialism, don't they? And that that's going to make me happy if I have this or have that. Or if I if I head towards th- that goal there that's going to get me whatever they're after from it. Um, it's not happiness, is it? Because in, in your journey, um, I suppose you've been able to let go of everything. I think, yeah, and I, you know, we're in the age now of really needing to be conscious of what future are we creating for a future and, like, our over-consumerism and over-indulgence, you know, when we go to these eco-villages, um, there's, like, hardly any trash being produced whatsoever, and they're growing most of their own food, if not all of it, so it's like they're giving back to the earth from what they're taking. You know, even when I was living out of my van, it's, like, so easy to see how much trash can pile up from, like, snacks. And if you think about it, too, all the shopping and plastic bags that we have, every, you know, these holidays where we wrap everything in paper and we just throw all of this stuff away, and there's millions of us doing that, it's like, well, what the heck are we really doing? And this is something we need to start being conscious of, like, what's necessary and what's not. It's so true. It's so true. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you look at the size of some of these WalMarts and these these, these these big shopping places, and yeah, I mean, you're right. Just think how much we do truck away, even just to go shopping for for clothes. You know, there's the bag it comes in, uh, you know, and, and everything else. And I mean, we need those things really. But wow, and you think of well, as, as well the 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 different countries out there who really are you know, it, it's good to shop kind of thing, because it's so hot to be outside, so everything's inside under these big moles and stuff, like in Asia and places like that, and the consumerism aspect, bloody hell. <laughs> but we have so much that exists already, we have the buildings, we have, you know, not everybody is, wants to go get land and go live off in nature too, so that's something I think is important to think about, is how can we start making our cities more green and beautiful? Because we have community all around us, but yet all of us humans feel so alone. We're so isolated. You know, we really, really do need to get into gardening and permaculture and and growing, you know, on all these skyscrapers we have. We can have gardens up there. You know, if you think about it, if we all have our food provided for and stuff, like, it just takes, it, it really takes away so much, um, it gives us so much more free time for our creativity and stuff and not being dependent on all these trucks and these huge factory farms to provide for us. And then if we do have any world catastrophes, we can help each other out. We can be like, hey, we got you. We got this. You know, we can send you supplies. 
we're not a, we're not freaking out because the trucks can't deliver to us. We have everything. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I've seen um, concepts where you know they grow on the side of skyscrapers and each little apartment's got its own growing facility and even you know they use the roof space that well some of these newer buildings are designed to to have this grow on them as well and it, it's so cool but don't you think that we we live in a culture of we need it now we're in a hurry we've got things to do um and it's all this doing and making money and really not validating ourselves for what we really would be passionate about and doing things that we're not <laughs> This is where I feel like the magic of life is going to play in in these times. The things that aren't serving us aren't going to bring us satisfaction in life anymore. They're going to bring more discord and disharmony because it's trying to get in us in alignment for what we're supposed to be doing in these times. And so I feel like the people who are really stepping up and creating that, it's going to be really inspiring for the people who are confused, who are depressed. You know, they're going to see what's working and what's not working. And that way we can take action on what's important. What, yeah, I mean, what, what, what is your main message in this book, then, would you say? You did kind of touch on it before. Let's just remind ourselves what, what that is. Hmm. The main mes message of my story is that this is a beautiful time to be alive. It's not a fearful time. Um, that, there are, that we have an opportunity to really grow and evolve together into the world that Earth was always meant to be. And so it's my journey of really um, getting and shedding all of these old systems and belief systems myself and, and stepping into who I was meant to be and, um, and to help others step into who they were meant to be to fulfill their soul purpose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what it, thank you for sharing that, by the way. What excites you the most about being alive today, would you say? Because we haven't had any opportunities like this beforehand. Like, never before the whole globe is truly connected. And, we, you know, here you are in Amsterdam. Like, this is so exciting. And, and we're all thinking, hey, we do need to come together. We do need to shift how we're living. What kind of epic world can we create together? And, you know, I think if we get more of a network of these eco-villages going, we can travel amongst them. Because you go there, you be a steward of the earth, you help take care of it, you learn from each other, and, we, you know, traveling becomes easier. You know, you're not just going to be alone in a hotel room somewhere or something. You're actually going to be around good people, learning different cultures. It's, it's such a huge opportunity to be alive right now and, and to come together as a collective. That would be a cool you know, thing, wouldn't it, to have eco-villages, you know, throughout different parts of even the big cities as well. Um, you know, where anyone can come down and contribute their time towards it. And then, you know, reap some of the benefits from it as well. But as long as they're putting something in. Well, that's the other thing I've liked about these communities as well, is there's nothing forced about it. It's nobody's told, hey, this is where you're going to work and this is how long you have to work there. It's like some people don't like gardening and farming, but, hey, they really like cooking or they're really good builders or, they're, you know, whatever their skill is. And that's where they, they volunteer to put their energy. So say, like, someone now doesn't like farming or gardening, I'm sure you have another great skill that you can put to use that would help make this world a better place, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, we've all got our passion. We've all got our talents, haven't we? And, and that, that's it. You know, you put your passion into what you, what you really want to do. And that, that is a natural side effect of helping people. And as you say, it may not be an eco village. But I, my point was as well, just that, it, you know, that would that, be a cool thing to see, wouldn't it? You know, different cities yeah. having their own eco, eco um, gardens uh, and where yeah. people come down. I mean, do we have that in the UK? Well, yeah, I guess we have things called allotments, but then you're paying, uh, uh, you know, to rent the land to grow your own stuff, and it's a little bit different to the eco village. Who owns the the land then on these eco villages? Um, so usually it's people, uh, the the group of friends that came together to purchase this land, or some people who have money buy the land because they they had the same vision that they saw that it was important to build a community or build a sanctuary. So each one kind of varied. Yeah. Um, do, do you think you've found your soul family by visiting these places as, as well? I'm realizing that I have soul family all over the world. <laughs> 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 we yeah. all do, you know. Um, you know, I really learned to traveling. It's like when I would travel with my son, it wasn't just like letting all these people take care of me. I would see opportunities where I could give back, where I could help out, where I could... 
um, help clean things out, where I can pitch in, you know? So we're all becoming better humans together. That's important, um, isn't it? That's, that's important yeah. because, you know, it all feels like we come here sometimes to heal, doesn't it? That's, that's, a, that's a big part of coming here. And I think gardening probably helps helps in that process, doesn't it? It's very there's something nice about being out in, in the garden and just growing stuff. I suppose it's um, yeah. I never yeah I never thought I would like it or growing food. But then you know I'm out there weeding and you're like you're with your friends and you're working with earth and it's you're getting a tan and it's nice out. You're getting a workout. It's it's really fun. <laughs> yeah, I I just think a lot more people out there as well just want to live off the grid nowadays. I think a lot of people realize the old system doesn't work, that we don't need as much. Um, people don't want to be paying ridiculous bills. We can be more self-sufficient. There's alternative uses of power. Um, you know, so I feel like, that. yeah, it's a driving force to want to get back to the land. And I feel like it's Mother Earth calling us home as well. You know, we've gotten really distant from our natural roots, and it's, it's really important that we get back in touch with that. Um, I think, too, because we do have this free will and this reality, we might see people experiencing a lot of chaos and stuff, and it's important to not buy into that fear, um, but to do what you can to make your world a better place and do what you can to better yourself, you know? Yeah, I get everything it. That, yeah. Everything that we just see accelerating is helping us to get into alignment, so it's just... Yeah, don't get, don't be afraid. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. It's all helping us to get into alignment. That's so true what you say, and something obviously that you know, there's a star seed title in this in this book. So so let let's just get to the, the the beach and the UFOs. You had a UFO experience, is that right? I have had UFO experiences. Um, that's so cool. I really res I really resonate with being from Pleiades myself and being a Pleiadian. Um, but that, that, that chapter you're talking about in the book, I was driving out to the beach with my cousin. She's about 13, 14 at the time. And um, we were out in the desert, and we were seeing um, these stars where they looked, they were flashing on and off. And then all of a sudden, you would see them, like, uh, move slowly into different formations. So from being, like, in a triangle formation, all of a sudden, they're in a straight line, and then into a square. And it was, it was just really fascinating. Um, but I do believe this is um, Star Family letting us know that they're here and uh, we're, that they're helping us. You and, you want, you, and you felt that was important to include that in the book as well? Totally. I want people... Um, I had such a fear as a child of UFOs and aliens and I was like, oh my God, and all this. And there's... I feel like Hollywood maybe puts that a lot out there so we, we keep them at bay and we don't get their help because if we're in a fear state, our star family doesn't want to help us. They don't want to scare us. But if we're open to um, the possibility of having star family out there and, and welcoming perhaps their help or their knowledge, you know, then, then they're going to be more um, enticed to coming in and speaking with us. Yeah, yeah. And do you think that was an intuitive feeling that you got when, when you... Um, witnessed that UFO experience. There was an intuitive sense to that. With them being Pleiades, yeah, you would say. Yeah, yeah, that there was That's a connection. Totally, yeah, mm. definitely. And no fear. It wasn't like a fearful thing. Uh, it was a very loving feeling. Even when I did notice them at first, I was a bit apprehensive to tell my cousin and show her because I didn't want to scare her. And then I it was just so beautiful, and so I did point him out, and she too was just super stoked about it, and <laughs> wasn't afraid. And we were just like, "Oh my God, I can't believe this is happening." <laughs> no, no, I bet not. I bet not. Uh, well, you know, and, and speaking about intuition as well, that's a really important part of your journey, where you've always been guided by your intuition. We probably mentioned that on the show before, but just that's an important part to mention, I think, as well. Totally, your intuition will always lead you right there's there was times on my journey where I felt like I should stop here or something and then intuitively it was like no you need to keep going and I was you know so I would keep going and I would understand why my intuition had me um keep moving that day or what that lined me up with the right person with the right situation um but yeah your intuition is your best friend it's it's your connection to spirit so the more grounded you are, the more balanced you are, um, the more you're taking time to spend in nature, um, keeping a healthy alkaline diet, having positive thoughts, 
the more in alignment you will be with your intuition and not like an egoic perspective that you might think is your intuition, but it's really not, you know. And, and you know, again, we've talked about fear, but you've mentioned in your book as well about being brave and taking a chance, taking a risk. How many times have, do you think you've taken a risk and it's sort of paid off and opened up loads of doors for you as well? <laughs> That's what this whole book story, series is about, really. Um, it's the whole time it completely paid off. To even, you know, sometimes I was like, oh, maybe I should go home now. I'm a little afraid to keep going further. My intuition was like, no, keep going. And it's, it's just such a beautiful story of synchronicity and the power of the human family right now and how things are not just happening, you know, here in Arizona, but all over. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, that's so true. All over it's happening. No, it's, it's so true. And, and I bet having your son there, uh, that helps you to keep going as well. It yeah. was. And, you know, I think he... I felt so blessed to be traveling. As, I feel like as a single mom, I was really looked out for by others. People um, just really naturally cared for us. Um, and yeah, just having your baby with you, people were such kindness. And um, he even made me brave. There's times where we would just go camp out in nature by ourselves. And I felt like there was times like I wouldn't be sleeping in my tent right now if I was by myself. But since I have my toddler with me, I feel so confident. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. I, no, I, I, that's why I asked the question because I, I could, yeah, I thought that would, would be the case for you. Uh, but that's really cool. Um, and uh, what a special part of the journey that he, he's been on with you and you've been on with him as well. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 so cool. And you'll look back on these years, won't you? And you'll be like, "Thank God I did that. That was such such an amazing part of of, of my life doing that." Yeah, definitely. I'm really glad that I didn't give in to fear and not do um, not do what my soul, my intuition was calling me to do. Everything worked out um, better than I could have expected. Well, well, what's it? You know, taking that journey. What was it like taking it without a partner? Um, because mm. a lot of people uh we, you know would have preferred having someone else there but you just didn't need that did you <laughs> you was cool without <laughs> you know um yeah being there's times where it's tiring where you're like trying to set up camp and maybe you have a cranky toddler with you and you could really use that partner's help to getting the tent set up or something but i realized how strong i was at the end of the day um this is the other important part of community i realized is in community too you have other moms there to help you you have other people so you're not alone in that aspect you know you can work together to cook dinner um but you know i the journey of of us being by ourselves was really important and i felt too like i could communicate with guys and have conversations but there was like a safe boundary because my son was there and i could always be like all right my kid's tired gotta go to bed you know peace out and it didn't there wasn't that like awkwardness because this journey was very much just about me and him and, and not about, you know, um, re relationships or sex or anything like that. Like, that wasn't the main po focus of this travel experience. The most important thing of all this journey, right, is you. Because what it's done for you, you've become such a different person. There's, there's many women out there your age, and, and, and you are still young, that just would not be able to do what you've done. They would, you know, you, you've grown so much in your journey and you've taken that 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 chance and look look at the person that you've become compared to who you were yeah i just want to say to moms too that if you are a single mom don't be afraid to take your child out into nature don't be afraid to travel with your child you know have safe boundaries keep awareness um use your intuition but go for it you know i think that's really important and you will grow so much from from doing stuff like that how much have you healed from your journey <laughs> I don't think words can describe that, you know, it's I'm such a completely different person. I used to be just so angry, so in doubt. I had violent beliefs. I was very much for the war and military and all that to now where I feel like someone could splash a cup of water in my face and I wouldn't even react. I'd be like, are you okay? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> can I make you a cup of tea? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm, obviously I would defend myself if I needed to, but yeah, of like... Of course, of course you would. That, isn't that a beautiful space to be in? You can't buy that space. Because now, I'm not... Look, I, I don't know if you've, you've met anyone recently, but if, if you haven't, 
or if you're in that stage of dating, all right, we'll get there, but um, imagine who you're going to attract in your life now. The quality of person that you are going to attract now that you would not have resonated with before. You maybe would have resonated with someone on a different scale, maybe on a lower scale. And there's nothing wrong or right about that. It's just I'm saying now, I think you're in a different space to attract someone that's in a better place and it can give you and your child the life that you're after as well. That You'll give yourself that life, but they can come and be a compliment to you, not a, not a hassle. I feel like you say that too. You know, I, I really talk about that in the book because I was with a partner and when we did break up, I write about how upset I am and how I, I don't think I can travel on my own. And um, I really see in the journey why we did break up and why the universe had me do it because it did give me a new, totally new self-confidence, a new set of self-worth. And calling in the right partner, like you said, the right compliment for me. Um, yeah, it's just, it really got me grounded out and realized um, that I can do things on my own. I don't necessarily always want to do things on my own forever, but it made me realize that I can and that I'm strong and that I'm worthy of the right person that's on the same loving level. And, and maybe that right person is just that far away. He's there already. <laughs> we'll have to see how the story unfolds, huh? We, we will, we will. And the nice thing about <laughs> it is, is, I'm not trying to get you married off, don't worry. I'm just saying, right, that um, you probably don't need anyone, but... Actually, when you are ready, it'll be different. Yeah. My heart's all like, Ooh, right now, because, it, yeah, and I feel like um, it's worth it, and it's exciting, you know? It was really cool to take this time for myself. It but, will um, be, because that, but I, I, God, I could keep saying it, but I don't know why I'm saying <laughs> it, but the, that person you're going to meet, it's, it's going to be a beautiful thing. But, you know, I can, I, I can understand, you know, the, the per, you know, who you was with, that it was painful to split and everything else, because obviously there's a child involved as well, oh, right? It's not easy. It's never easy, but with a kid as well, it's even harder. So, you know, pat on the back for both of you to... to allow each other to do what you've done um and i bet he's like wow <laughs> where did that side of her come from <laughs> he's actually in the uk so um oh god he's not a brit is he <laughs> he is <laughs> oh no you didn't fall in love with a uk guy oh god <laughs> yeah we we're, we're difficult we're yeah. difficult no not all of us no not, not all of us no that's cool so you actually it was a british person you was with yep we actually, um, that's what kind of in the 2012 time, he was in England, he was um, a UK DJ, and he was kind of getting out of the club scene because he was tired of like drugs and stuff as well and was getting on a spiritual path, and we started, um, we met through spiritual friends on Facebook, and I'm like, wouldn't it be amazing if we could be in Sedona together on December 21st, 2012, and we made that happen, and wow. I'll always love him, yeah. Wow, yeah. that was so meant to be, wasn't it? <laughs> God, 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 God. See, there you go, right? Two people, not even in the goddamn same city, let alone the same country, <laughs> right? And you're putting signals out, they're being received, and you're drawing each other together. Yeah. yeah. That's a bit of an aha moment there for me, a little bit. And I feel, I have a lot of peace with, um, because I feel like we did have these soul contracts. I do feel like it was a part of my destiny to be a single mom in this life for a little bit. Um, and he, and what he's going through as well. So I'm not like angry or bitter about any of it because everything is playing out as it's meant to. And... Well, for those listening on a podcast, do you have a website? I do. My website is um, starseedstory.com. Okay, so so yeah, that's been coming up on the screen along with your book as well. Um, what would you what would you say is a really important message of of what you've gone through and what you've experienced? That love is the answer to everything. Having love and compassion for yourself and others. Humanity has just gone through so much over these thousands of years that we've been here and so to have compassion for ourselves and for each other um, and to have the willingness to let go of things that aren't serving us and, and to move towards um, a better way of being together. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the hard part, isn't it, is of letting go of what's not serving us and most of us do not want to do that but that's a fantastic message. Thank you for that so much. 
Well, I would just like to say, uh, Brittany Love, thank you so, so much for joining us today. And I want to wish you all the best with your book. But especially, um, I'm, I'm interested to see what book number two is going to be about as well. So good luck with uh, good luck with that. I'm guessing it's almost like giving birth again in one sense. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, doing this process of seeing it through and, and, and getting it getting it out there. Um, but just, you know, thank you so, so much for, for, for your time today. Thank you so much, too. I really enjoyed this. Um. Well, we've come to an end on tonight's show. Don't forget that you can listen and watch all our past interviews on the More Shows official YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new daily shows. You may also find out more on our past and upcoming guests on the show via themoreshow.com and do like us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates. So until next time, be safe.